any, uh, any animal that's uh, poisonous, anything that may, that may sort of hit you or bite you and from the envious eye. طيب. And this inshallah ta'ala, my brothers and sisters, uh, will end these, this series of the world of the jinn. Uh, a quick, quick recapitulation. We talked about this world, we talked about the jinn, we talked about their creation, we talked about uh, um, the uh, things that attract them, we talked about uh, their dwellings, we talked about uh, things that attract them, we talked also about uh, t types of witchcrafting, kinds of witchcrafting, the signs of witchcrafting, black magic, the signs of a witchcrafter, or the one who practices black magic. And we talked about some of the cure, the cure of, uh, of, of uh, black magic uh, 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 regarding, um, regarding what? Two things, regarding uh, infertility and regarding uh, separation. And we talked about the, also the cure from generic, generic black magic. And we also talked about the safeguarding. Huh? We talked about safeguarding. And at the end, we talked about the evil eye. And that is haq, it is true. Something called evil eye is really true. And how to protect oneself from it. My brothers and sisters, the aim again is not to alarm you. Or, uh, yeah, to alarm you, of course. But not to frighten you with something called jinn. People, they tend to be scared from something called jinn. But as I pr promised, promised you in the beginning, I said by the end of this series, you should be really comfortable with something called jinn. In fact, you should be pleased and happy that if a Muslim jinn will come to enter your home, you will welcome somebody called a Muslim jinn to come and enter your home. So this was actually the aim. The aim is that you get to know this world and know what things that attract them and how you protect yourself from them. Not to be scared. No, I think from now on, خلاص, huh? Scared? No, would you? Sleep by yourself, of course, right? You don't have to sleep with the lights on, would you? Lights on, what would you do before going to sleep? Ayatul Kursi, make wudu, and then challenge the jinn. Huh? Challenge the jinn. I have made wudu, and I made tzak, and I read the ayat Kursi. Come here, come here, jinn. No, don't do that. <laughs> Because that would bring some pride. Put your trust in Allah Azza wa Jal. Resort to Allah. Take the means. This is the means. Nothing can harm you. Nothing can harm you. Because it is only Allah Azza wa Jal who can protect. And it is only Allah who can harm. Nobody can. Yes, the Prophet was hit by some sihr, by black magic. And he became sick. And he saw a dream. Jibreel came to him. And he told him this witchcrafting was performed by such and such man. A sahar. And the sihr is in this well. And the Prophet ﷺ, he sent Ali and a couple other sahaba like Zubair and another sahabi. He sent them to this well. And they digged and they, 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 they drew or withdrew the, uh, the, withdrew the, 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 the sihr, this black magic thing. And then they brought it to Prophet ﷺ. They brought it to Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet opened it, recited some ayat, some verses, like the verses of the Ruqya. And then he burned them. And subhanAllah, this hadith says, the Prophet stood up like a, you know, you know, some, like a, a horse, when, it's, when that horse is chained, cannot move, right? And a horse that's chained. But as soon as you unchain the horse, what happens? The horse just jumps and goes and stop galloping, right? That's how the Prophet ﷺ, subhanAllah, came out. Likewise, the Sahabi who recited the Fatiha on that man who was hit by a snake, right? Bitten by a snake. He just went and recited the Fatiha. That's why the Fatiha is called the, the Ruqya. Or Shafiya. Ruqya. The Fatiha is called one of the names of Fatiha like Sab'i Al-Mathani, Al-Quran Karim. You know, the Fatiha is one of the names is, or of its names is Ruqya. He only recited Al-Fatiha. And subhanAllah, the man again just stood up and like he, the hadith says, like he was unchained, like a horse unchained. Yes, black magic can happen. But you know how to protect yourself. And even if you protect yourself with things, and it may be if it gets you know, to happen to you, may Allah forbid. It's nothing but a test from Allah Azza wa Jal. Somebody better than you got hit with it. Who's better than you? Muhammad Alayhi 
So put your trust in Allah Azza wa Jal and use the means. These are the means that I've shared with you today. I ask Allah Azza wa Jal to help us all to practice and to convey. I'm sorry if I have made this yani, uh, quite lengthy, but there's a lot of material that we needed to cover. Uh, and I wanted really to cover uh, as much as I could. If you have any questions, uh, Bismillah, let's start the questions. Bismillah. Bismillah. Okay, as I mentioned, how do I know that the person is giving you the evil eye? Like um, uh, this, the, the, the hadith of uh, Sahal ibn Hunayf, I mentioned earlier, and excuse me, and Amr ibn Rabi'ah. Uh, the Sahabi was taking a bath, and the other guy in front of the Sahaba was saying, beautiful skin. And the man fell sick right away. On the spot, he fell sick, and he fell down. He couldn't, you know, they had to lift him up, you know, to, to sort of lift him up. Uh, so that we know it's an evil eye, for sure. Uh, somebody's walking and everybody's saying, oh, look at that person, subhanAllah, he's walking nice or whatever. And then that person feels, uh, you know, he fell. He, he, he just fell. You know, he fell. Uh, that's, 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 uh, could be also from the evil eye. I mean, uh, it happened to me, subhanAllah. I was just, I had nothing. I was going to work out. And then there was guys were sitting, you know, just sitting. I was just going to, in my workout, hit the bag. And all of a sudden, my neck, just, I could not move my neck. I had nothing, subhanAllah. Uh, I don't know, it could uh, that happen that maybe they've said something and whatnot. I had to go back. I couldn't you know, work out that day. I have a friend of mine as well, you know, a, a very close relative of mine coming out from his, from his uh, car and in, you know, like from the edge of his eye, from the corner of his eye, he could see because he was driving a you know, very fancy car. As he stepped out from the car, and he wanted to make the you know, one step, he made the first step, and as he wanted to make the second step from his, the corner of his eye, he could see some people looking at him and talking, he says, Wallahi, I could not make the second step. He couldn't, he fell. What is it? Could be that these people said something, right? Uh, these are some of the signs. Signs of somebody who's been hit maybe by the evil eye. When you decide the Quran, you're yawning. I didn't mention this, but you may take notes. If you yawn as you recite the Quran a lot, somebody who just is he's, he's okay. But as soon as you as soon as you recite the Quran, you start yawning. You start yawning. Yawning. You know what yawning is, right? Uh, and you cannot stop. You cannot stop, subhanAllah. You just want to, you know, uh, stop it, but you can you just can't. Most likely that's the you're hit by hasad, by evil eye. There is you you uh, try to uh, follow the directions given uh, in this presentation, or there's so many books. I mentioned last week, you know, a couple of books, and you may also uh, 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 contact people who, you know, experts in this field to try to, inshallah ta'ala, try to help you. Yes, one from the sisters. Okay, the, the, a practical example here. This, this sister uh, had magic done on her to stop her from getting married. She went to the ship various uh, the sheikhs and one sheikh read on her for seven weeks and now uh, has given her this to work we can open it maybe no we're not gonna oh, yeah we can but subhanallah look you see the sheikh gave her this to wear, yeah. to wear. Yeah. subhanallah uh, actually when you open it you you see some stuff and there's uh, actually there's some ayah that we need to recite you know you said the same ayat mentioned here and, uh, and then you burn it, or you put it in this water, you know, a vessel of water, and then you just recite this ayat, and then you see the ink coming out. But, uh, subhanAllah, so here, you see, they put it in this, and then they put, it in, uh, they put some plastics, and then they cover it in plastic, and they cover it, and keep covering it, and then at the end, you just see a small piece of paper with some gibberish that you cannot read. Can you just put it on the camera so the sisters can also read? Well, they came from the sisters. Yeah. Oh, it came from the sisters. Play. Uh, the the uh, from the sisters. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Just like I mentioned, you know, the water and the, or the oil or the uh, honey, and 